Hey everyone, welcome to a full time out. Tonight's guest is one of the greatest shooters in the history of Seapog, and he'll be the first to let you know it. As a member of the Mythical Five, the shooting guard, he's helped to deliver several championships to the organization while also capturing many best guard awards and MVP honors. Uh, currently, he works as a manager for a medical device company and is active in the CPOG community as a basketball dad to his son, Chris Paul. We want to welcome Chris Albano to the program. Hey, Chris, glad to have you on. What's hey, up? Hey, Chris, thanks for coming on. Uh, hey, guys, how are you? Good, good. Uh, I wanted just to kind of kick it off and, and just ask you uh, if you could just take, it, uh, take us back down to your earliest basketball memories. Earliest non non uh, non Filipino basketball league related. Just uh, you know when when uh, when did it all start for you? Um, go again. Coming here from the Philippines, I started the fourth grade, and I went to uh, PS thirty five, and I uh, dad dad hooked me up with the uh, OLGC basketball team, and it was a bunch of misfits. Apparently, but we won the championship that year. And back then, there were no A, you know, A, B, C. There were no different uh, divisions, just one team. We won a championship fourth grade, won a championship fifth grade, and then sixth grade, I went to uh, St. John's Villa. And apparently, I didn't realize this, but I was coming to the worst situation <laughs> basketball-wise because they hadn't won a game in two years. So sixth grade, we won our first game. First game of the year, we won our game. And it was like we won the freaking Super Bowl, <laughs> you know. But but as far as as far as uh, as far as first uh, first real memory, I would have to say um, the St. John's Villa one was definitely the more the more impact uh, impactful one because at that point I kind of had a footing already, you know, living here in the states, and uh, and uh, and I and I kind of and that one I kind of felt like I I, I really had a I had a say in what happened. You know, because when I went to OLGC fourth grade, the team was consisted of fourth and fifth graders. You know, and and then and so I it, and a lot of these guys, you know, they're like, who, you know, who, who am I? I'm like an outsider going in, so I had to fit in. And these guys weren't exactly uh, to lose the term, uh, use the term loosely, ballers. You know, and, and obviously as a kid, you know, it's a lot of immaturity. But uh, definitely, uh, my first one was uh, I would think six. Sixth grade was probably uh, you know, when I really felt like uh, you know I, I, I had a I had a real passion for the sport. Yeah. So obviously you didn't start with the Seapog program. How did you How did you take these skills and like transition and begin? I guess what were your earlier memories with Seapog, having played already? So how how did I how did I use these? How well, how did you transition? Yeah. How did you like transition into CPOG? So, so remember, so sixth grade there was no CPOG, right? When I was in sixth grade, right, right, right. So seventh grade still nothing, and then I think eighth grade there was a there was a group Poxy, which was the Philippine Philippine group. So I was on this team. We were the Saints, right? So literally, I was Saint Chris, Saint Jerry, Saint Romel, <laughs> Saint Paul, Saint Edwin, Saint you know Saint Voltaire. <laughs> Uh, uh, the only one that had like a real decent uniform was Saint was Patch was Patch because he had Saint Patrick and Saint Patrick was really green and blue, so it looked like it was. So we we play up we play in the upstairs CYO gym in Port Richmond, yeah. and then we try to catch some of the games downstairs, watch some what's going on. It was like embarrassing. Like we had to like invert our shirt, bones walking around Saint Voltaire. Like who the hell is that? <laughs> yeah, but um, but you know, so so and we and we always played against one team. It was kind of like the. Uh, I, looking back, we were like the Globetrotters playing against the Washington Generals. <laughs> you know, we played against, like, you know, Mark. I wish I could say Mike Sal. Mike Sal was actually the best out of that group, but he was too young. But he was older, his older brother. And, you know, it was myself, Tim, Jerry, you know. And so, so it, it was kind of us. So every, every, uh, every Sunday, we'd play against the same team. And it, it was always, obviously, it was always a disaster. You know, but I mean, as far as, uh, you know, what I learned and then how I brought it to CPOG, I think kind of everything goes hand in hand because uh, the common denominator is mm -hmm. while I was learning, Tito Lari was always involved, right? So when I was in the Philippines, Tito Lari taught me how to play. 
taught me how to shoot. I was the only one fourth grade coming in from the Philippines. You know, I used to shoot the ball. I used to shoot the ball, you know, like this, right? One hand, shoot the ball one handed. I couldn't reach. I could shoot from the foul shot, foul line and in. I couldn't reach anybody else from anywhere else. So every time we played horse, a lot of times I would lose because I couldn't reach. So I shot when we shot the ball that way. But you know, then you come fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade. Now I'm still shooting the ball this way. You guys used to beat me in horse now. Basically, now I'm making sure the water is water bottles are filled. <laughs> you know, and so, but you know, it was always, it was always, um, you know, Chico Larry always taught, um, he always taught mechanics, mechanics, do things the right way. And don't deviate from it and trust it. Just trust it, trust it, trust it. That's what I did. Because I, I, I didn't know anything else. Right. You know? And then, uh, and everything else was just, you know, as far as, you know, uh, I remember Tito Larry always instilled um, work ethic, right? Like, no, what you, whatever you're doing now, he always said, no, whatever you're doing now, someone is working harder. Which, for growing up for me, I couldn't fathom that. Because I was, I was, I was crazy. I, we didn't have iPads. You know, all these things playing around. Like every time, if it wasn't raining outside, I was outside. In fact, you know, I got mad at me one time because we had a championship game and I got sick. I got a little bit of a cold because I was shooting around in the rain. <laughs> you know? But, uh, you know, and that's where that whole thing, like, you know, know your, uh, what is it? Know your worth on, on the team. Know your value on the team. Know your value on the team, they used to say. And so it was kind of like, uh, you know, back then I was like, well, you know, I just wanted to shoot. But it was raining, you know, and I got sick. You know, but so it was always, um, it, you know, it was definitely, definitely, uh, you know, give and take. And then as you get older, obviously, you, you realize what what things you can table and what things, you know, you could just uh, go on. But that was it. Work ethic was his number one thing. No matter what you're doing, you know, first of all, someone's always going to be bigger. Someone's always going to be faster. I didn't believe that. I think it'd be bigger. I didn't think it was going to be faster. Like, if you would have told me back then. Yeah, obviously, yeah, this guy's big. Obviously, he's tall. You know, whatever. But they're not going to be faster. And 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 and, and to Larry, I remember one time I told him, you know, you have the ball, you know where you want to go. I don't give a shit. He just said, I don't care how fast the defender is. He doesn't know where you want to go. And to, that just that I carry that for forever. Wow. You know, and and uh, and that's to me that's uh, you know, that's uh, that that was uh, you know, whether he was saying it as a lesson. Or he was just saying it because he's basically he just you know he can just talk shit and it's all basketball related because he's got so much knowledge, hmm. you know. But it's uh, so I didn't mean to say shit. That sounds anyway. like a mama mentality. No, no, that, no, no, that, no, that, no. You don't understand. He was a, uh, he was just you know he, he just there was a way that he used to communicate with us, you know. And it wasn't really. I remember in the beginning he was always uh, you know he was kind of like he, he. I had a way of talking down to the level. So at least common denominator. So there was no, so there was no, there was no uh, misinterpreting what what the message was. Right, right. Yeah. So, but I mean, so going back to your question, you know, earliest memory, I think it's, it's got to be when I went to St. John's Villa, because here I am, I'm going, he's 35, fourth grade, fifth grade from the Philippines, fourth grade, fifth grade. Then he goes sixth grade, we won a championship, sixth grade, and also when I was in sixth grade, back then, like I said, CYO, there was no A, B, C. So I would literally play the sixth grade JV game. And then maybe I think four games in, then I was playing the varsity game right after, which was seventh and eighth grade. There was only, there was no seventh grade team. There was no eighth grade team. Seventh and eighth was varsity. So I would literally play double headers, like four or five games into the season, I was playing double headers, which was awesome because we played against Staten Island Academy. And Tim, our oldest cousin, was on Staten Island Academy in eighth grade. And, and he used to fucking hate it, uh, excuse me. And he used to just, he used to hate it because I made the all-star team as a sixth grader and he didn't as an eighth grader. <laughs> Although I had zero points in that all-star game. So let's just see that. <laughs> but I made the team, you know, but sixth grade team, we won, we won the all-star game. So bringing, bringing that experience, um, you know, playing, playing CYO, early, uh, CYO earlier on, uh, once you got connected with, you know, Jerry, you, know, you when, when Paul started playing with you guys and, and Seapock, um, you and Jerry were one of the younger ones that got moved up right away, right, with, uh, with yeah. open team. Because, you know, back then there wasn't any juvenile, no. junior team, so, or collegiate team. So 
you know, being 15, 16 years old playing against guys literally twice your age, you know, how did you take that, that challenge or how did you even take that opportunity um, and, you know, explain what, what, your, what was going on in your head and how were you able to manage uh, a way to, to be productive? So as a 15-year-old playing Paba Open, um, uh, the guards in front of us were uh, Ben and Kevin. All right, so, so Jerry and I both kind of, but we got a lot of PT because I, as a 15, I thought I was better than those guys. I, I, that was my attitude. I was better than them. I killed them in practice. You know, I could shoot. They couldn't, you know, and, and, and I just, uh, and we had like a, especially, you know, Jerry and I, we had like a, this swagger, you know, and we always knew because Abe was on our team, Abe Bakani, right? And we always knew that no matter what happens, this shit went in doubt, give it to Abe. Right, because he was nasty, you know, five nine, five ten, get shot up anytime he wants, and he was just smooth, smooth, it's one of the smoothest players I've ever played, especially in this prime. I think he played uh, when he was in the Philippines, he played for uh, Mapu, I think. I think, oh, uh, so, uh, team. yeah, so with he, you know, it, it was, but but it was kind of like, you know, it was, we weren't, we didn't go there thinking, that, oh, yeah, you know, disrespectful, very, we, we, we learned from Kevin. And we learned from Ben, even though deep down I was like, you know, I, but Ben, Ben, you know, I was for, I was fortunate enough. Jerry, Jerry and I were fortunate enough to be part of a team where, because kind of Tito Larry instilled the culture of the team, where there was no listen. This is this is our team. Not one. There's not one part greater than the other. And so everybody was, you know, I'm here to make this guy cover me better, and he's there to make me better. You know, and and you know, and as as a as a young kid, you know, back then, you know, you think you played all the world, you think you're all the world, you know, as, but it was definitely, uh, you know, he, he, there was, there, I mean, we, we were confident, but we were grounded because, because the system didn't allow us to not be grounded because if, if you, I think looking back now, because we, we decided to go against that aspect, we're not on the team. Yeah, because we're not, so it was, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, it's, it, it helped us to want to get, want to improve. You know, like we, I can't, I went there thinking, all right, I'm better than this guy. You know, whatever, I'm playing for Farrell, you know, JB, Barcia, whatever. And, uh, but at the same token, you know, I, I knew that uh, this, this was, this was this guy's team. You know, Ben ran this team, right? And uh, so I knew to just, I, I couldn't just be better than him. I, I had to be a lot better than him. But at the same time, I, I expected him to teach me stuff because the Filipino way of playing back then compared to when I was playing in high school, night and day. Remember, I, so I'm, playing against, I'm playing against kids my age. All of a sudden, I'm playing against men that try to hurt me. You know, and, uh, and you know, that's why it was always, you know, <laughs> to this day, I know that the fact that Tito Larry was on the bench uh, these guys, listen, I, th I know they took it easy. As far as easy in the sense that they weren't trying to, like, cripple us. Because they knew that there would have they been, been a problem. You know, but, you know, cause it's not, you know, we weren't in practice learning how to, uh, oh, how to, how to avoid getting your ankle twisted. No, it wasn't like that. But it was just, you know, you know just always, you know, just, just protect yourself or protect yourself. Things like that, you know, hold, you know holding the ball. You know, holding like you hold it, you always, always protect your face. Well, that is not broken. You can protect his face. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So I mean, um, that's uh, everything. You know, you, you guys both play ball. You know, so you know, there's obviously, uh, you know, in sports is uh, there, there, there are steps. You know, and uh, for for every level, for every level or every um, how do I say this? Basically, uh stage of your of your basketball life yeah there there there's there are definitely uh learning moments talk us through um your first naba and maybe some of the better years and and more memorable times during the, that tournament my the first naba we ever had we were in chicago um played against chicago in a championship a bunch of ex pros you know, a bunch of high school a bunch of like this is 1998 i guess we lose a championship game. We're all taking salt pills. We're at a gym. 
by by the waters. Um, very close game, we lost the championship game. Um, Jerry and I got accolades that that night, but uh, to me it was it was a I felt defeated. It was a it was an an empty trip, sixty hour trip to Chicago. We all felt like we we're just we we're dejected. No one, no one was happy. We lost in the finals. Right to us, finals losing in the finals means you're the first place loser. Right. Um, I'll never forget uh, Jerry during the awards. You know, he got best forward. He got best guard. During the awards, he said, uh, "Yeah, I'll see you guys next year in Staten Island and prepare and prepare to <laughs> come in second place." <laughs> well, he was wrong. He was wrong because Chicago didn't make it to the finals. We, we beat uh, Winnipeg in the finals. Wow. Yeah, but but even that. So our first level at CSI, we had uh, San Miguel was our sponsor. Um, I remember the Romo, Romo came to Nava with a peace sign caught in the back of his head. Uh, Carlo was working for a printing company. You know, he was asking, you know, what you guys want? Are you sure you want? I remember Paul had like that, you know, uh, Magic is a big, a real big Magic man. Magic, Jared had air, I, you know, had, uh, who knows, that probably had Tarzan because he was like, wow. <laughs> but, uh, but I remember like, but Paul had give, given my sneakers at MVP 1999, before the Nava tournament. 89? 1999. 99. Yeah, okay, 1999, right? What was that first time? 89. Yeah, no, not 89. 99 was Philly. Oh, 89? Right. Yeah. Whatever it was. Yeah, damn, old. <laughs> I remember, boy, so boy makes these like, stickers. So I literally put it in the back of my head. I had these red <laughs> Nike Air Flight 3s, I think it was like, MVP 19, you know, whatever the year was. So that's as you were playing. And then, uh, we're going through the championship game against Winnipeg. Romel is, uh, Romel gets suspended because he got into a fight. We're playing against this team that had a couple of ex PBA guys. Uh, this is the first time Tito Larry said, go out there before the championship game, before the, before the tip, you five turn around and bow to the crowd. And what? I was like, what? I, I had no idea. <laughs> like, it took me two years to find out why the hell did you make this then I found out it was okay. Enjoy the show. Wow. That's so that's so yeah. And so we went out there, and then you know it's funny because I'm, I'm bringing this back now. Last night I was at a two nights ago I was at a Egbert. I was at Alan's house. It was Tito Tunyon pass, right? So I'm talking to him, and then Gary brings up during that Naba, someone took my legs out in the first half. I got end one. I got the layup. Someone took my legs out. Tito Tunyon came running out. Oh, <laughs> they, they were like, I never saw my dad get mad about anything. All of a sudden, tell me that you like that. I think the name comes right out. I'll never forget. <laughs> wow, did you get money out? So it's uh, you know, but it was it was one of those things where you know, it, it should it would have been a close game, but we just you know, we were, we were crazy. And we got, I, I mean, I could easily say that was my best Nava Nava memory because you know, it was uh, at, at 37 the first half. It was over at halftime, <laughs> right? But the thing is, that's not even it, though. I, I think I, if I was going to think about like, my best Naba, it's not even the Naba. It's the practices that led to Naba. Because these were intense, like fist fights amongst each other. You know, and then after that, we all go to Hop Key. And we all go to Walmart. <laughs> we all, we yeah, all yeah. Something. yeah. We all go to do you got to break bread. You got to break bread. And we laugh about it. And we laugh about it. But, but at the time, it was, I remember Jerry threw a swung at Ed. Jerry threw a punch at Ed. He missed, but Ed started crying because Jerry, the fact that he thought that Jerry was going to punch me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but it was, it was crazy. It was nuts, man. It was, it was intense. It was, it was crazy. We used to play at the rat hole in Brooklyn. We called it the rat hole because it was this little gym in the church. You know, it's like basement gym, no windows. And you just, you know, just beating each other. You know, this is like July, August. Just you know, play for like three, four hours. We don't stay on, and it just—I mean, Nabo was easy after that, you know, because we used to put we, we never like it was like, okay, all us five. No, it wasn't like that. And then, and then after that, then Saturday morning, we always used to take turns. Romel, myself, Jerry, we we picked the other guys up. We pick I pick up. You know, I had Paul with me because I was I was living obviously. I pick up Jerry and Romel, seven o'clock in the morning, next week. Romo drives. We go to PS8. 
we go to 51, we go to wherever the run was uh -huh. at seven o'clock in the morning. And a lot of times we'd be on because you stay on till you lose. Right. A lot of times you were on and we left because we were just done. It was, it was noon. We can't, we're, we're thirsty, we're this, we're that. And then that's it. That was, that was our Saturday morning. You know, and then we go home and then, uh, then we hang out at someone's house. We hang out at one of our houses. Not a lot to get drink, it's lost, but we hung out and we probably from there we went to a party yet. Who knows? It was, it was it was crazy. It was like that's you know, when school was over, it became okay, now it's not the season. And you know, we all play for our respective schools. You know, we all played for CYO teams, which is great. Sometimes we played against each other. You know, but it was always uh you know, it, once that was done, that was it. Now it's not the time, and we're all together. We go to CSI, we do wig sprints at the track at the old CSI. Yeah, like I don't see anybody doing that ever. Now. You know, but it's, you know, like I said, different era. You know, it's, uh, you know, you do what you do. It's kind of, because uh, we were always like, we wanted to make sure. Th there was a point where in summertime, we could, we could play, like, like, we could play like six, seven games. No one would get tired. Because that first night, but the one we lost, we were cramping, just that, taking salt pills. People, two to you, was like massaging our legs on a freaking bench. You know, it, that was, I was like, well, what is this, man? Like, I didn't realize, you know, basketball could do that. Because people, we used to just play forever. But all of a sudden, now, push comes to shove. So now, we wanted to make sure that feeling, I, I, I wanted to make sure I was never going to experience that feeling again. I never did. Well, let's stop playing with the seniors. <laughs> you know, I mean, that, that drive, that, uh, you know, some might even say that irrational confidence uh, that, that, you know, you guys had as a group, you know, that, that cultivated, that was just cultivated within, you know, within your group, within your circle. Or was that coming from, you know, my dad or coming from, you it know, came from somebody uh, else? It came from, um, obviously, you got to be confident to feel that way. Right? Right. So right. Back then, it was the, we had the inner colors, you know, we would play. So we would just, you know, uh, we would be on a team playing against each other, and I used to, I used to love that to those challenges. It's, it's, it's confidence, but also, as like I said earlier, it's that confidence can only take you so far. There's a, there's a fine line between confidence and arrogance. Arrogance, a lot of times, arrogance will end up shooting you, shooting you in the ass, and then you, you're done. Then you're floored because then people go after you. But, but, but confidence, there's that, it's, it's like bound before a game. Okay, like when I found out what the hell that meant, that, I mean, that's, th think about it, dude. You're playing against a team and they're bowing to, like, hey, basically enjoy the show. <laughs> I was on the other team, you know, and, and that's what I used to love. I used to love when we play against games, and we play games like that. Even I'm not Jerry Paul, I don't know, sorry. But they, they box them all on me. Okay, to me, I, I loved it. Like, that would make me even want to, like, work even harder. Because that brought me, you know, from confidence to here to like here. You know, because like, you know, and then uh, also the like triangle to go to Melbourne to the Philippines, triangle and two. So I uh, triangle two and played a one. But, it, but even, it, like, even way before that, there was always a system in place that I knew that we could always fall back on. Like, for example, they play full court man because we get a lead. Two players like, okay, Ed played a point, or Jerry, whoever the five is coming, played a point. Yeah. All of a sudden, you got their five playing full court man, who's never played full mm -hmm. court man. You know, and it just, it just, it was always just, you know, you know, tempo, 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 but never, never really, you know. I mean, yeah, sure, disrespectful in the sense that you know, we, but it wasn't like, a, you know, we were just we, we were confident in our ability because we knew we knew the work we put in. Right, Larry, we used to play in Saint Saint uh, Saint Paul's. By St. Peter's High School. I remember 30, first 30 minutes, no basketballs. We didn't even know there was a basketball in the goddamn gym. So <laughs> that's fun. We were, we were in shape already. Yeah, we were in shape. So go run. Go run. Go do uh, suicide under, under 25. You know, meanwhile, in college, I knew suicide under 30. Like, yeah. 25 is harder. <laughs> you know? Or it's uh, 16 in a minute, 17 in a minute. Dude, that's hard, man. So, you know, the side, you know, side, side, that's hard. That's yeah. hard. I mean, granted, the court's not that big, but still, man. Right. You know, and uh, and it was just, 
you know, it was just that, just that, that work edge, knowing that, you know, when you now jump off, so there's another team in front of you, you had that, you know that you put the work in. That's what I tell myself, that's what I tell Christopher all the time right now. The reason you lose confidence is because you know you didn't put the work in. That's it. That's good advice. That's, that's it. You lose. Uh, what's his name? Uh, who's uh, JJ went to school with him? Uh, he, Notre Dame. Kyle. 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 Yeah. Kyle. Kyle probably said so. He did a St. Peter's, uh, St. Peter's, uh, St. Teresa's retired his number, mm -hmm. right? Last year. And he said one of the most profound things I've ever, like, I listened to his talk. I was, I was listening to his talk. Was, uh, you know, so I remember saying, Oh, yeah, you scored 42 mid Carolina. And he was like, 43. You know, but he was uh, a. <laughs> But he, he kind of said something. He said, uh, everybody strives to be great, right? Everybody strives to be great. But what are you doing today that's different that would make you great? Are you, uh, you want to be great? Good. But are you practicing to be great or are you practicing to practice? Mm -hmm. You know, like, what are you doing different? Because if you're not great now and you're doing what you're doing now, you got to do something different. Absolutely. You know, and I told, and I told Chris, I told Chris, dude, I go, dude, that's, that's deep, that's, that's you. listen, he's only in sixth grade. Yeah. Thing is, and I keep telling him, I go, I go, he was like, dad, well, who taught you? Roll it into the other. No, not roll, roll Larry. So I'm trying to, roll Larry. So I'm going roll Larry. He used to sit on Larry's bench when he was coaching electronics when I was in third grade, <laughs> second grade. You know, and, uh, and, and, you know, and, and, and the one thing, you know, Tito Larry always taught was, it was always, um, you know, just, you know, always be grounded, but always be better prepared than, than, than that guy in front of you. And, that, and, and that's it. And only you're going to know that. Hell, mm -hmm. uh, the guy in front of you may have worked as hard as you did. But, but I don't care. I know how hard I worked. You know, and, and that, was, that, was, that was the thing. That was the thing. That was the thing with Larry. And, and it was like, you know, he was a disciplinarian, but it was like kind of that, that, it was like, it was, um, he, he did it kind of in the flow of things. You know, it, it never felt like a punishment. You know, it, like it always felt like, okay, like you could always, especially as a kid, you know, oh, well, oh good, I need to do shit. No, as a kid, you know, there was always, you, you always like, you, you always understood what his, what his, what the end game was. You know, and then, you know, and, and, and you know, and, and Sipang, it's, it's, it's funny because Sipang is, uh, you know, it, it, they always say, oh, yeah, you play high school, you play against Kenny Anderson, I played against it, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, when you're playing, playing against, like, ex-PBA guys, it's a lot harder than playing against guys. Because, you know, Nothing more physical. But, yeah, more physical. And back then, there was no, I mean, they let you, I mean, they, it, it was hard, man. They, they freaking let you go. And you, especially, like, back then, we, we thought we were still, yeah, they could jump up. But and you got to realize, yes. You, there's, you gotta protect yourself. Like in high school, I would jump up, take a lift, and then already right, forgot probably got back. But Filipino basketball is different because as you jump up, it's, you gotta jump up and almost like, well, you, you, you can't really cringe because then you're gonna blow the shot. Yeah. But, you know, that's why, that's why I learned how to jump off two feet. It's Filipino basketball learned me to jump off two feet. <laughs> because I'm jumping off one foot, I was flying all over the place. That guy's foul, you know, you know, I'm making like a locker room. But you know, but it's uh, it's you, you gotta, you know, it was always like you always to protect yourself, protect yourself, protect yourself. Jerry and Mel were great at that, because Mel jumped off two feet, so Mel went straight down, straight up, straight down. You know, but I was always, you know, I mean, you know, just especially as a righty, going up those feet, going on my left foot, you know, one foot, need a little bump, I'm fine. Mm. You know, but it was um, you know, and also, you know, you know, obviously you, you work out, the upper body stronger, you know, as you as you get older. You can kind of, uh, you know, you can control your balance a little bit more. I mean, everything, everything had a little, everything, everything he told us to do. Like, like it's so funny. You, you look at people, like, it looks like he never worked out before, right? Eh? <laughs> you know, but, but he was always like, hey, you know, do this, do that. He gave us all these, like, like calisthenics. Like, Ed was doing all these freaking workouts before. Next thing you know, Ed follows it to a team. He's just booming up with Dominique. He's doing <laughs> stuff. He's like, oh, jeez. You yeah, gotta get some. You gotta get some of those videotapes, man. Of, of oh, man not only dude. just, not only just the warm ups, but obviously of, of yeah, you yeah. guys and your, and uh, you know, we definitely want to try to get that on soon. Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. That was definitely different. That was definitely different. Definitely different. Everybody's like everybody's below six feet. 
Yeah. Now, like, you, you know, you had the opportunity to play uh, in college. Uh, you played uh, at, at our alma mater, the College of Staten Island. Yep. Um, you know, you it's, it's really rare that you get to play, you know, organize with uh, one of your best friends. Uh, and you had a chance to play with Romel, right? At the college, so what was that like? Well, I got Mel there because he was coming from a CW post. He wasn't really happy. Right, so right, right. Transferred. Okay. But like, you know, chemistry wise, obviously you guys already had that. But then, what? How did that translate to, you know, the college game for 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 we both had, of you? We had we had like the most probably the most fun, most successful year. Um. They and then and then it's funny because every time Mel and I have, then we played like a CW game together, and he was like. It was like you know, it was like playing with babies, <laughs> you know. But it was a uh, yeah, it was, yeah. It, that, that, that was that was a lot of fun. Tremendous fun, tremendous fun. And you know, and we both, I think that both the, those those years that we both played the most minutes. You know, we didn't play with a designated one or two. We played with whatever yeah. whatever the ball was on that side. That person was the one, and run. You know, just fill the lanes. You know, and, and it was fun. You know, we had some we had some characters on our team. Uh, you know, all, 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 all good people, everyone we got along with. I wish Potosa's you know, system was a little bit different, but you know, it's right. So, Tony Potosa played as a, he was a big guy, and he was just he was a really right. good guy. And so, his, his, uh, his, uh, his, his mindset was, was big guy predicated, you know, which is not, it didn't really work with what we had, but we had, yeah, we had, we had fun. It, it translated, it, it, it was good, it, there was no. Nothing. We run and I didn't do anything different playing for college than we did playing between us. Yeah, it was. Uh, everything was just kind of just. It was like a just basketball is basketball. Mm, yeah. You know, you know, basketball is basketball. All right, one, one more. Um, coach, uh, Coach Michael Plamenko, Coach Boots. Can you tell us uh, your favorite story? Never saw with Mike. Never saw with Mike. <laughs> it could be on the court. It could be off the court. Mike, Mike, Mike wasn't going to coach Chief Okay, so Mike is not is not really a basketball guy, right? So Mikey coached Chief because Jerry and I told him to coach Chief We talked to him. And he goes, "What are you talking about? No, 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 just just coach Chief Because because we were like, I remember teacher Yulo coaches one time. He's really like cheerleader. Go, 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 go. And Mike, Mike's not a basketball. He's not an X's O, an X's and O guy. In fact, funny stories I have with Buddha. I used to tell everybody, yeah, so we're in this championship game, one point game. Buddha calls a timeout and then he's like, guys, are we home or guest? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, like stuff like that. But he never really, uh, he never really, that's right. If, he, if you see, if there's any CFOD video you'll ever see, like when I was me playing, every time there was a foul shot, I always run to Buddha. And like, listen, what do you I never told him what to do. Mike, what do you think? Let's talk about this. Yeah. But he was old, but he was uh but Mike learned the game through you know, he learned the game through through interacting with us. Because before Mike would be like, Okay, um, okay, uh, Chris, Romel, Jerry, Ed, Paul. And that was it. Just running. And then all of a sudden someone gets in foul trouble, okay, Ed out, slick in. Okay, Paul out, Ben in. But me, Jerry, and Romo, there, there was a point, I think there was one in summer league. I don't think I sat. No. You know, uh, when we, uh, it was a, uh, you know, and then, but then my kind of, he kind of started like seeing things differently. I, and I, and, and, and I could, but you know, and, and he was the, he was the kind of guy that, uh, he never coached thinking that, you know, I'm going to tell you what to do because I know more. Right. You know, I think my best memory of Mike was, uh, he looked, the way his coaching style was uh, was unique in a sense. That it was kind of like, all right, guys, you know, we're all equal, right? Like we'd have a huddle with the bench, and then we'd walk out, and then he'd walk out with the five, and he'd be like, all right, guys, so you know, how do you want to do this? You know, and every time there was stoppage in play, I'd run back there because I knew that's, and I'm like, so what, what do you think? You know, two, three, you're the double pistol man. You know what you want to do? And then, and then he would. Uh, you know, he would, he would, he would, he would go that route. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he was like an X's and O's guy. Well, okay, he kind of got this play. No, it wasn't that. It was, hey, you know, what, what do you guys want to do? I mean, you, he was coaching coaches. You know, think about it. We were, we had enough, you know, especially us five. 
you know, you, yeah. you know enough in our, in our, in our, in our, uh, you know, mental role decks that, okay, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. You know, we kind of coach by committee. Right. Yeah, but I would, I'm, I'm just proud of the fact that I remember like, uh, he used to win a shitload of like best coach awards. Because we would win the championships, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I, to me, that was, that was the, you know, the proudest moment. You know, it's funny, because Jay, I was talking to you earlier, you were talking about, you know, what, you know, your, your best memory. I mean, I could use it, oh, my best memory, oh yeah, MVP, but no, it's not even that. My best memory was actually, not my best memory, but my most impactful memory was the, uh, was uh we look was we were all balling like 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 the world like every person in the world we cared for died like we couldn't even hold it we couldn't even hold our emotions because Keith Larry's coaching was last year right we knew it was his last year he said it was his last year we're at DC championship game ah, you, you watch watch the tape and you want to talk about leaving it out there we freaking left it out there um you know, uh, and, uh, and, and we lost. I, I, and the thing, I wasn't, I wasn't upset because we lost. I was upset because he lied and lost. That, which is to this day, I've never, I, I've ne I've never felt that in sports. Never. You know, usually we lose a, yeah, you lose that, but I was less because I was like, this guy doesn't deserve it. Um, and, and I, and I tried to, I tried to take, I, I tried to take everything on, you know, uh, and we all did, and we were just, and, and uh, you know, it, it, by far that's, uh, of any, that, that trumps over any of the, of, the, of the great things, because the great things were, there were a lot of them, right. you know, there were a lot of them, and, uh, and a lot of them were not even, like, individually related. A lot of them, I'm so happy for this guy, I'm so happy for this guy, I'm so happy for this guy. But that's the one that, if I could take anything back, if I could play that knob of that, I, I, I would. That's the one. That's the one. You know, and that was, uh, that, I mean, I, I, I remember I was thinking, it's funny because Cicelar is the one that's trying to console us. We couldn't even, like, I, I couldn't even look at him. Yeah, because we thought that we failed him. Wow. You know? and, uh, and that was a game that we, we ended up getting it back anyway. Because they cheated. Yeah, they had a. Uh, but, but yeah, because they had a, they had a. a non filled yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but it was uh, man, I can I can still picture it. I can still picture it. It's, it was uh, it it it. it, it like I was trying to tell us how bad I was. I couldn't. I couldn't even talk. You know, it was like uh, you know, and uh, so I myself, Jerry Romel. Yeah, Ed Paul, yeah, Ed Paul just did. They're just there for, they just there anyway because we need five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, I can't yeah, wait for them to, I can't wait for them to, to see this episode. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but no, but seriously, that was, that was tough, man. That was, that was, that was brutal. Like, I couldn't, I, I, I mean, I'm sure we said you game to the other team, but you must have looked like a bunch of, like, five days. In fact, the next year, the next year we beat Toronto in the championship in Winnipeg. That's the year when I mean, we did the chair. The yeah. Detroit fight. The Detroit fight. That was the next year. Right? We gotta we actually we gotta we gotta save that for so that, that, that means its own episode. Yeah, yeah we gotta <laughs> shelve that story. No, so the next year was that. Right. And, Chris, I don't and, want to cut you off. This is gonna cut us off. So uh no, 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 we'll do a we'll do a part oh, yeah, two. We definitely we definitely yeah, have to have part two. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Always, always, always. You guys keep doing what you're doing, man. I love it. Thanks for watching my time out. A full time out. Yep, always. See you guys Until next time. Yep, always. Ciao.